so it's time to talk about jazz improvisation, arguably the funnest part of jazz. Now over the next number of videos I'm going to be showing you a whole bunch of different improvisation concepts and improvisation techniques, and essentially showing you how to improvise. And I'm sure you'll be thrilled to hear that I finally submitted to peer pressure and tuned my piano. Anyway, so let's begin. Um, so some people say that they can't improvise. I'm here to tell you that that's absolute nonsense. It's a skill like any other. If you practice it, you can get better at it. Sure, some people might be more naturally talented at it, but absolutely everyone can learn how to improvise if they follow sort of, if they know the key improvisation concepts and techniques that I'm gonna be going over in these few videos. So firstly, I want to get rid of two misconceptions about improvisation. The first one is that creativity can be learned. Like I said, it's a skill like any other. You can learn to be creative. As strange as that sounds, it's true. And secondly, improvisation, despite the name, requires a lot of planning and a lot of preparation. You have to map out the chords, you have to map out the guide tones, you have to learn the melody, learn the key that it's in and the scales that you can use, memorize the chord progression and completely understand the song inside out before you can then actually sit down and try to put some kind of improvisation together. You can't improvise an improvisation, strangely enough. Or I should say you can, but you have to be really, really, really good at it. Now I thought I might um, run through just a few of my favorite quotes about improvisation. First one is by Thelonious Monk, and it's, there are no wrong notes, some notes are just more right than others. Then there's a quote from Bill Evans, which I really like, which is, there are no wrong notes, only wrong resolutions. And the final two are from Miles Davis. The first one is, it's not the note you play that's the wrong note, it's the note you play afterwards that makes it right or wrong. And finally, do not fear mistakes, there are none. Now in this video, I just want to go over the one key overarching idea that sits behind all of jazz improvisation. Now this is really, really important for you to understand because this is essentially the entire foundation of jazz improvisation. So if you don't understand anything, please ask a question in the comments. So this idea has numerous names. It can be called um, consonance and dissonance or playing inside and outside the scale. Um, but I'm going to refer to it as tension and resolution. You create tension and then you resolve that tension. Now that's the most important part of all of jazz um, improvisation. And really it's, it's the thing that sets jazz improvisation apart from a lot of other genres. Now at its core, the idea is actually quite simple. Let's say you have a really simple chord progression that's in the key of C major. And so you can use the C major scale to improvise over it. And essentially all that resolving tension or playing inside the scale means using the notes from the C major scale or from the key that you're in. And so the other side of that, creating tension or playing outside of the scale means using notes not in the C major scale. So in this case, all the flats and sharps. So essentially you have five notes outside of the C major scale which are used to create tension, and then seven notes within the C major scale to resolve that tension. Now it's really as simple as that. So to make this a little bit more concrete and to really explain what I mean, um, let's just take a really simple chord progression like a 2-5-1 in the key of C major, so D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7. So that's all in the key of C major, so we can just use the C major scale to improvise over the top. And so you can play something like... Right, so that sounded nice and sweet. Um, all the notes worked over that chord progression because they were all in the key of C major. Um, and I used a couple guide tones. So if you want to create tension over a chord progression like that, you use some of the wrong notes. Notes not in the C major scale. So that was a little improvisation only using the wrong notes or the black notes, the notes outside of the C major scale. And that sounded pretty terrible. It sounded like I didn't know what I was doing, I was playing wrong notes, it, and just didn't fit at all. 
But if you play some of those wrong notes, but you're able to resolve them back into the C major scale, into the right notes, um, either to a guide tone or to a root note or something like that, then it can sound quite jazzy and quite good. Right, so that sounded much better. And that's because each time I played a note outside of the scale, I resolved it back into a note inside the scale. And in fact, I think that sounds even better than just using notes within the C major scale. Because really, if you just use the C major scale, it sounds fine, but it sounds a bit sort of sweet and boring, and nothing really happens. There's no sort of interest or harmonic complexity or tension. Whereas if you throw in a couple of wrong notes, but you resolve them correctly or properly, you can get a much more interesting solo. There are heaps of different ideas and ways to create this tension and then resolve it. And over the next few videos, I'm going to go through a whole bunch of different ways. So to create tension, you can use polytonal scales, ambiguous scales, passing notes, cycled patterns, um, dissonant intervals, or using avoid notes. You can displace the melody or use chord extensions. And to resolve the tension, you can use riffs, the diatonic scale of the key that you're in, arpeggios, guide tones, which are really important, um, the melody, and quotes and cliches. And so over the next few videos, I'm going to discuss all of those things and how to use them to create and then resolve tension in a jazz improvisation context. The videos are going to start quite simple and gradually get more advanced, and we're going to focus on resolving tension first. Now that may sound a little bit counterintuitive, but um, it will make sense once I start going through it. So in conclusion, all I want you to take out of this little overview video is that jazz improvisation requires building tension and then resolving that tension. And hopefully if you stay with me over the next couple of videos, um, I'll explain to you a whole bunch of different ways of doing that and how to sound really professional and get really cool and interesting sounds out of your jazz improvisation. So essentially, I'm going to explain to you how to play the right notes, and then how to play the wrong notes, and then we're going to come to the conclusion that, in fact, there's no such thing as right or wrong notes. Cool, so thanks for watching, and feel free to leave any questions or comments below. See ya!